if you've never smelled a composting toilet that isn't quite right, you know, uh, let's see, the, the thing that I can uh, say that it's the closest to might be when my little Jack Russell Terrier dog ate an entire pound of coffee beans that were like a coconut vanilla coffee. And uh, she had diarrhea. I'm gonna say she had diarrhea for about a month. No, not that. A couple, a couple, three days. Yeah, she was. Yeah, that smelled pretty terrible. I mean, that was rough. That was like. That was bad. That was a bad deal. This. This is probably. This is probably. Probably about about the same. About the same deal. It. You know. Man, you get a whiff of that, it'll blast you right out of that tiny house. Actually, I don't care if you're in 204 square foot or 2,004 square feet. That's going to be rough. We're headed over to Grayson Rowdy's tiny house right now. Um, kind of comical. The last video that I took of them, Rowdy says... Nature's head composting toilet. It, uh... And one of the major questions everyone has with these is, does it stink? Well, I can vouch it does not stink at all. I get a call. It's only been, what, four days? Rowdy says, Grace says that thing reeks. It's gross. It's disgusting. I need help figuring out how to how to get the, the stench out of here. So we're going to go over there. I got a few ideas. Um, the thing that, that had happened before was I retrofitted a solar fan. All gases and vapors and anything that is in that toilet to the outside so it doesn't stay in the bathroom, work its way into our living room and the rest of the tiny home because it's not very big. So this is ran off solar power. It does use the sun, but the problem we faced is we have a big tree next to us, the pitch of the roof. It doesn't get a lot of sunlight during the day, maybe two hours on a real sunny day. It's used on... Uh boats and stuff and it and uh, I know that where I put that it's not getting any sun now so that fan's not working which is why uh, which is why the uh, the fumes are are not getting out right um, and so yeah we need to we need to get air movement um, and you know I don't think it would ever cause enough um, gases and stuff to like hurt them I, I'm not really necessarily worried about that as far as gases being in the tiny house uh, I'm sure it does think if that's not getting out of there though so um, what I've what my thought is with this whole thing is to take a is to take a computer fan uh, with a 12 volt plug plug it into their AC, you know, get a get 120 volt down to 12 volt little plug-in that you would use on any little diffuser or um, some of those uh, candle, uh, whatever they, wax melting things, anything like that, that would uh, go from 120 to 12, have that just plug in, there's a plug in right next to the uh, nature's head toilet in their bathroom. On the side of the toilet here, this will go on the side like that and then through this port here is a ventilation for this uh, bottom area for uh, just uh, any fumes or smells that might come out of you know obviously out of a, a composting toilet there shouldn't be any fumes there shouldn't be any smells and uh, these things do a really good job and they really are great that way so they're starting to smell stuff and that's not good um, and the reason why, and there was no air movement, and so that was coming back into their, to their house. So that's icky. We don't want that. So what I've done is, I've taken a little computer fan. This is just an itty bitty little fan out of a computer, and uh, I've mounted it onto where normally you would have uh, nature's head comes with this fan and it's an electric unit and, it's, and you plug it right into the wall and you just leave it plugged in all the time and uh, just a regular 12 volt fan so not a big issue 
and and I really hope that this takes all smells and all everything out of uh, you know out of their house for them and uh, makes this composting toilet uh, deal just a little bit more enjoyable for them um, as it should be. So it's time to empty the contents in our composting toilet. Um, one of the first things you want to do is empty the urine part of it. <clears throat> you dilute that and put it by a tree to just dilute it with water. That. Next we have an electric fan over here that helps pump the smell from it in here to the outdoors. We do have a uh, solar powered one outside but it's not a we don't get enough sunlight in a day where we have the house so we had to actually wire in a uh, electric one that and it just plugs into the wall but you unplug that you unplug the air tube the duct that goes to the outside that just slides off with a rubber coupler <clears throat> on each side of the toilet for the composting part there's two black screws that help secure it to the floor and you just back them out Next, <clears throat> see now that the toilet's loose, <clears throat> the next part of it, you can take the whole thing out or uh, and then we unbuckle it. There's two buckles on each side that we'll have to, or one buckle on each side that we'll have to back out to get to that. But for now, we're going to take the whole toilet outside. Man, this thing's light. So on the mount on the ground there's two L brackets that have two screws in it and then there's a black knob that goes into this little brass insert that's actually in the side of the toilet so you don't have to take them screws out every time and you just turn it to the left and it'll just back it out like a normal screw and there's one on each side and that's how it's mounted to the uh, bathroom floor. So first part once you have it removed from your house and you actually want to empty the composting part of it you uh there's two there's one buckle on each side you just flip it down lift this straight up just like a toilet lid and it comes off to the right there we go so after you have the lid off you pull the urine out you do not want to mix the urine with the solid waste because it will not compost right after you do that you just lift it up and you dump it right in whatever designated bucket you have You can't hardly see any of the solids in it at all because it all decomposed and turned into <clears throat> just soil basically. But uh, we also don't want to get it wet because once we add coconut core it'll actually make it harden up. Um, as in here we have, you do see your remnants of toilet paper and all that but that's fine. We're just going to let that decompose on its own. <clears throat> you just keep adding to it and it's not any special toilet paper, nothing. Just your basic run-of-the-mill toilet paper so since we keep the liquid waste separate from the solid we never dump them together <clears throat> now if you were to dump them together you'd have problems as in the uh, actual coconut core wouldn't be able to heat up and absorb just the uh, solid waste it would actually turn it it would more turn into like a toxic waste together so it's best to keep them separate. The coconut core can only handle so much. I mean, yeah, you do mix water with it before you put it in, but that's just a little bit of water to it to help actually break the bricks up we get. Um, so by just keeping it separate, it can do its job. It can break the uh, solid down and really turn it into more of a soil is how you can think of it. This is what it looks like after we dump it in here. <clears throat> We're, gonna, we're not going to dump it, we're going to keep adding to it, and it'll keep breaking down. You'll see the toilet paper disappear and everything, and it's you might see it now, and you can see it in a week, and it'll actually be a little less in here, because it's working, it's composting, it's working on building soil. We're, <clears throat> once we have it more in here, we're actually going to plant, you know, trees and shrubs, just, you know, kind of whatever. We're not going to use it in our garden, we're not going to plant our vegetables and everything in it right now, but for now, we're just going to stick to trees and shrubs, and we're going to let it keep keep piling up and keep composting. This is what we use in our composting toilet. It's The brand is Coco Core. 
We're not really uh, specific to any brand. We're gonna try several of them. They come in 11 pound blocks. Um, it's actually the fiber dust of the coconut core. It's the actual fibers from it when it's all broken down. It's dehydrated, 11 pound block. You have to add water to it <clears throat> to uh, mix it up basically to retain water. Um, you can use it on potting as a topsoil. It, it, it's really good for soil. It's really good for planting. So if you ever want to use it, you can get it on Amazon. I'm not sure what this was. Uh, Fourteen dollars for this 11-pound block of this specific brand. This is what it looks like once you add your amount of water and we don't know the exact amount that we put in here we kind of just uh, estimated and just kept mixing it up but this is what it looks like once you have it on here it's really light and fluffy you wouldn't believe it I mean it's, it's lighter than a handful of soil it's nice and you can see all the fibers in here that's what's really gonna break up all the uh, solid waste so you mix it up so there's no clumps in here just so it looks just like soil right out of a bag once you mix it up, you kind of just start dumping it in here. Try not to get a bunch. If you see some clumps, try to break it up. The more broke up it is, it's going to be easier to spin. It's going to help break everything, break everything up. So just kind of sift through it very lightly. So come to find out that half of this five-gallon bucket full is just enough to fill this correctly and see now that we're turning it see the solid waste is gonna go in here and now that you're turning it it's mixing it in there and it's working really well it's not hard to turn and that's why you want to get b rid of the big clumps is this has to be nice and easy to turn and, that, and once this actually gets hard to turn it's kind of an indication that it's probably time to change change it because it's you know it's all starting to compact we have our new uh, coconut core in here, all ready to go. Made sure everything is turning freely. Next, we put the liquid waste bucket back in. We did. Now we told you not, you probably don't have to spray that out because you don't want it too wet in there when you add your coconut core. But we did spray this off because once you're mixing and stuff, you do get a little bit of waste up here. It wasn't that bad at all. This is your fan. Here's a better shot of the fan that's actually in there and it, it is a uh, computer fan is what it is used in here and there's a little plug in right here for it so make sure your gaskets on there for both of them also before you put it on make sure you have a lot of this off of here you don't want a lot of that on there because then it won't get a good seal there's your hinge Set it down there, hook each side up, and you're good to go. Oh, we got the toilet in here, and let me remind you, this is not very heavy at all. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but I can't say more than 10 pounds. So you get it in here, you line your brackets up on each side. There's provisions on each side of the soil um, tank, you, you could call it, the soil container. There's a little provision, so it slides in real easy. All you have to do is find the, uh, the holes for your black little screws to go in, one on each side. Just kind of wiggle it around, you know, until you find it, and it's pretty easy. And I just go hand tight on them, and it doesn't move at all. We reconnect our suction tube that vents to the outside. Here's the plug-in we have for the internal electric fan in here. Plugs into there and we're good to go.